everyone, Teresa here. Um, today I am going to be making uh, homemade pierogies. Um, it's really easy um, and I hope you all like it and hope to try it. So right now what I'm getting ready to do is I already cut up all my onions. Um, I used a half an onion. I'm cutting that up and I'm going to add that to my pot. To, well, to my pan with two teaspoons of olive oil and um, also I already boiled my potatoes um, and I have them set aside for right now. They're already peeled. Uh, didn't cut them because I boiled them whole but they're all boiled already and everything. So right now I just have to get the, fill the, the rest of the filling ready to put into the potatoes. So right now I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm going to try. Okay, there we go. That's better. So I'm going to turn on my stove and you're going to want it at a medium high heat. And I'm adding about two teaspoons of olive oil. And just put that all around my pot. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my onions. All my onions are all chopped up. Uh, you know, you want to chop them up to small pieces because you're going to grind it. Um, not grind it, uh, blend it, I'm sorry, in the with the potatoes and everything. So I'm going to just go ahead and add the onions. And then I'm going to let these sweat a little bit. And when those are done, um, just sweating just a little bit. Then, then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of garlic to it. So, But for now, I'm going to lower my flame to medium high. Because you want these to cook for at least 10 minutes. So that they get a nice caramelization, get brown. Um, that's the way you want them to be. So... Right now, I'm going to go ahead and get one uh, clove of garlic, and I'm going to get that chopped, and I'll be back, and we'll go on with the recipe. Okay, my onions are coming along nicely, so I'm going to go ahead and add that clove of garlic that I minced really well. I'm just going to go ahead and add that in there. And again, we're still going to cook this nice and slow. As you can see, it, maybe you can see, I don't know, but it's starting to turn brown already. And now I just want to mix the garlic in there. I just didn't want my garlic to burn, so I put it in after the onion cooked for a little bit. But, so we want to just go ahead and do that. Um, now, as I continue to let this cook, I am going to tell you about the potatoes and what else goes in it. So, uh, while that's cooking, I'll show you I um, just mashed up, I mean, I didn't even mash it yet. I got some potatoes, I put them in the pot to boil, peeled them, and with that, um, sorry guys, I'm trying to get the lid off, but okay, I got the potatoes, and in there I have potatoes and I also have um, some uh, cream cheese. Uh, you don't want to use milk because you're going to be making the dough and you don't want the potatoes to be real wet. So you want more of a dry filling than uh, wet. So um, I'm just going to go ahead while right here and start to mash this down a little bit as I grab my fork do that um and yeah so you just want to mine are pretty much cool they're warm right now um i boiled them a little bit ago um but yeah you want to break them up because before you mix them because you definitely don't want everything going everywhere so just go ahead and break them up and then season them to uh how you would like your mashed potatoes but again like I said I wouldn't use milk because it'll make it too wet but I have cream cheese in there and 
um, like I said, just mashing this all up. And I tried to get rid of most of the bad parts of my potato. So, but I guess, you know, as long as your potato's good, I have some dark spots, but they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. So, and it's not easy mashing potatoes with a fork. I don't know why I didn't just grab my masher, but I'm already doing it, so. <laughs> now, um, like I said, I'm going to continue to mash this down. And then when my onions and garlic are ready, I'll show you the next step. Okay, I mashed the potatoes up the best that I can, you know, by a fork. So to this, you want to add a half, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And I forgot to buy some, so I'm running low, so I have to use my little quarter teaspoon to reach in there and get it. Well, not only that, that's all that fits in there. <laughs> but okay, so you want to add the pepper and you also want to add a teaspoon of salt and I am using kosher salt and you want to add that to your potato mixture. My onion and garlics, garlic is done and as you can see they are nicely brown uh, that's the way I wanted them to be so I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that into the potatoes and then I have my mixer here so I'm gonna take my mixer and I'm gonna start to blend this and mix it all up and I also added a little bit more cream cheese because it just there wasn't enough when I put it in there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back because this is gonna be very loud so I'll be back well I went ahead and I mashed up my potatoes with the blender uh, blended them and I got them to, to the best that I could get them and now you just want to set this aside especially if you do this while they're still hot mine are pretty cool but if you do this while they're hot uh, you definitely want to put it aside while you make the dough so I'm just gonna cover that up and put that aside um, now for the dough you're gonna need two and a half cups of flour but I wanted to show everybody the best way to get your flour. I already put two cups in there, and I'm just using all-purpose flour, no name brand. And this is the best way. Let me see if I can get the camera up here right. Best way to do this is to pour it in to your measuring cup and let it overflow. Let's see. <laughs> Let it overflow like that. And then you want, let me pull back, that'll be better. All right. Then what you want to do is you want to take your knife and just scoop it off. That's the best measurements you can get. And I just hit a bump, sorry, a lump in there. Okay. So then you have a perfect amount and it's not too much. It's not packed in there or anything like that. So, just wanted to show that real quick. But, all right, so with this, now we're gonna um, make a well in here. It, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even put the camera back down. <laughs> but, okay, I'm just making a well in my uh, flour and set that aside for a minute. You're gonna need, like I said, two and a half cups flour two third cups of water and then I'm gonna crack an egg and I'm gonna crack it into the water because it'll just mix better so I keep forgetting to grab my silverware that I need so I have to grab a fork and just mix this with inside the water And you also want one fourth cup of sour cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that into that well. And 
I want to get the rest of this out because there's quite a bit still left in there. So, all right. Good enough. And then you want to go ahead and add your two-thirds cup of water and your egg. And then you want to give this a nice, good mix. And just start working in your flour. And just mix it until you get a nice uh, dough. Now you're definitely going to have to have a nice, well-floured board when you go to mix it. When we put it out onto the... Oh, the other thing I forgot was my salt. That's not good. Again, I'm using kosher salt, and I'm adding a half a teaspoon of salt. And again, just mix till you get it all well blended. And don't spill it like I'm doing. <laughs> but as you can see, it's already starting to form into dough. And you're going to want to put that out onto a well-floured area that you're going to be working. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some flour. Put you guys back here so you can see better. And flour my surface here. I'm just using my countertop. I don't have a good board to use. Um, so just go ahead and turn that over and start mixing your dough. And it's going to be sticky, but that's okay. Just want to uh, knead it really well. And as you need flour, keep adding. And I definitely need more flour, so I'm going to grab some more flour. And just keep kneading. You want to work the dough really well so it's nice and smooth. And like I said, as needed, you just keep adding flour. And it starts to get real sticky, which it's getting better. I just mix it with the flour I already have down. And it becomes nice and smooth of a dough. Just like I said, work it until you get that smooth dough you want. Because after we get it nice and smooth, we're going to separate it and we're going to roll half of it out. So it's starting to get nice now. just going to add a little bit more flour. To the dough and to my work area that I'm going to be rolling it out onto. And that's pretty nice. I'm just working it into a bowl, adding a little bit more flour. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, and I'll be back. Okay, um, I did need it a little bit more uh, when I turned the camera off. Now, what you want to do is just leave it here. Um, you could either cover it with plastic, or just put the bowl that you use, and let it set like that for at least 10 minutes. While that's setting, what you want to do maybe I don't know but it'll probably be a lot easier is you just take a teaspoon um, measurement and you take your potato potato mixture and just drop them and have them prepared for when you do roll out your dough so that's what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna uh, put a bunch of these down 
And as you can tell, they're nice and stiff. That's how they're supposed to be. I'm going to move my dough. No, I'll just move you guys over here. We go. And like I said, this is a one teaspoon. I mean, tablespoon. I'm sorry. This is a tablespoon. And I'm just getting my mixture again and just putting little balls so that you can just pick them up when you need to put them inside your dough. So I'm going to continue to make these and let the dough sit for 10 minutes. And when I'm done, I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, um, I let my dough rest for 10 minutes. Doesn't um, get bigger or anything like that. But um, one thing I did want to tell everybody is a very important note is right here I have a towel. You definitely want to get a towel and cover it in flour because you don't want your pierogies to stick which they tend to do so just have a nicely um, floured piece of um, I mean a towel and now I'm gonna just go ahead and cut this grab my knife here but I'm gonna cut this in half and then again because I don't have a whole lot of workspace so but while I'm working with this dough here I'm gonna cover this dough so that it doesn't um, dry out on me now once again you definitely want to have a well floured surface so just add your flour to your, you know, your board, your counter, whatever it is you're using. And then we're going to start to roll this out. So I like to roll my rolling pin through the flour to help my rolling pin not to stick to, um, so that the dough doesn't stick to my rolling pin should say and this roll it out you don't want it to be paper thin but you want it I don't know about maybe one eighth of an inch I would say and so roll it again you don't want to be able to see through the dough but you do want to have um, it thin. And then I don't have a cookie cutter, unfortunately. So I use my <laughs> wine glass. It works perfect. It's three inches. That's what you need. So I'm just going to go ahead and make uh, the dough. Ooh, that one came out a little small for some reason. I think it just, you know, from its stretching. And I have all my little uh, potato balls. I'll show you that as soon as I'm done doing this. And there. I have my little uh oh that one didn't cut off well let me redo that one for some reason okay so just want to take that extra dough you have and throw it back into the bowl with the dough you already have so I'm going to do here You may need that. So now they look really small, but you want to just stretch it. And here are all my potato balls right there. And like I said, you want to stretch it a little bit. And take the potato, put it in the center, and give it a little stretch from both ends. 
It's a little awkward to do, but you try not to get the potato on the dough, but you just stretch it out and then pinch your dough together. Like I said, you can push the potato in because of the fact that it's dry so it ends up going well and just pinch your dough together and now I have to push it in again so I will push it in stretch both sides and pinch and here I got a little potato coming out so I'm just going to push that in because you don't want the potato to come out while you're cooking it because you're going to boil these after you have them made so and if you find for some reason they're not um, they're pulling apart after you do this just add a little bit of flour to your fingers and that should help it stick together real well and that's it that's how you do it and you have a pogi it is and I'm gonna go ahead and set it on my board there I'll do one more it is a tricky thing to do even for myself <laughs> so just like I said stretch it out a little bit take your potato put it in and stretch your dough a little bit go over I hope everybody can see this well enough and pinch go around stick it in there stretch your dough and I think I might have made this potato ball a little bit bigger but I guess it's just trial and error you know when you're making them so I'm taking some of it out because I did put a little too much in that one so and just pinch the dough together make sure it's nicely uh, sealed all the way around and that's it so I'm going to go ahead and finish making some of these and I'll be back.